Our New Testament reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 1 through 9, and verses 18 through 23. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such crowds gathered round him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on the rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil, but when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. That is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arise on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was grown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word, understands it, and who bears fruit, and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let us together go to God in prayer. Gracious God, open our hearts and minds this day so that we may hear your word and we may put into practice what you teach us, now and always. Amen. When my daughter Lindsay was between the ages of three and four, there was a funny incident that has remained part of our family. It's, it's part of that history. One day, Marcy and I were in our living room, and Lindsay was yelling and screaming and making a lot of noise. It was that happy child noises, so we were not concerned. So when she came into the living room, we asked her what she was doing. She said that she and Colin were playing a game in which they were the heroes and they were trying to overcome the evil bad guys. She said it was her job to find the bad guys and Colin told her to be in stealth mode. Marcy said, Lindsay, you're making an awful lot of noise for someone who is in stealth mode. Lindsay said that she was wearing a disguise so that no one would recognize her. And I said, Lindsay, stealth mode is when you try to be invisible. When you wear a disguise and you want to go unnoticed, that is called being incognito. To which Lindsay said, oh. And she yelled to Colin, hey, Colin, we're not in stealth mode, we're in a burrito. <laughs> Today's text deals with how we hear and how we interpret the Word of God. Jesus compares the life of a Christian to a man who is out sowing seed. This was probably a common reference point in the time of Jesus, and each person would have their own understanding of what he was talking about, of what was being said. Now, fortunately for us, Jesus explains how this illustration connects to the kingdom of God. As the man sowed the seed, not all of it produced a bountiful crop. Some fell by the wayside and the birds ate it. This is the person who hears all about God, but does not yet understand what God's love means, and so they are easily influenced and usually give in to the ways of the world. Some seed fell on stony ground where there was no root. It produced a crop, but, the, but with no strong root, it withered away. This is the person who immediately believes in the Word of God, but because they don't have a strong faith foundation, when crisis or tragedy strikes, they're not strong enough to deal with it, and they revert back to their old ways. 
Some fell among the thorns, and it had the life choked out of it. This person believes in the word of God, but is not willing to change their ways of the world, and so the word does not sustain them. And some fell on good ground and produced a rich full crop. This is the person who hears the word, who understands it, who follows it, and lives their life with God in their hearts. This text, this passage of scripture today, really comes down to two simple questions. How we hear the word of God and how we live out the word of God. In the parable, Jesus is addressing two kinds of people, those that are disciplined and centered in their relationship with God, and those who take a more casual approach to God in their lives. If I asked which soil, which ground that the seed was planted on, if I was to ask you which one you think you would fall into, most of us would say uh, definitely the disciplined one. Most of us would consider ourselves to be in the category of the person who hears the word, understands it, follows it, and lives their life with God in their hearts. I believe that is all of us here today. At least, I believe we all try to be disciplined in our faith, which means we are accepting and encouraging, we are teachable, we are patient. A disciplined person knows that there is always room to grow and that things can be seen with an open mind and from a new and different perspective. A person with a disciplined faith understands that the Christian life is one of patience, one of study, one of responsibility, one of insight. They know a disciplined person understands the challenges, the failures, and the tragedies of the human condition. They know that they never walk alone, but they are always in the presence of their Lord and Savior. A, dis a disciplined person lives a life dedicated to Christ and gives praise to God for the opportunity to serve. Now, how absolutely wonderful would our lives be if we lived that way all of the time? If we are honest with ourselves, we know that Sometimes, maybe most of the time, we fit more into the other three kinds of examples of the sower in the parable. The kind of people that start out hearing the word, believing the word, and have every good intention of living the word. But before too long, we are off the path. Instead of having that disciplined faith, our faith becomes impulsive. A faith that enables us to live in the moment instead of seeing things through. A faith that moves quickly. A faith that is always looking for the next thing. A faith that doesn't take the time to learn and grow. When our faith is undisciplined, our minds can become closed and not open to God's plan for our life. Now, here are some things that might keep a mind closed. Our jealousy, our prejudice our indifference, our selfishness, our pride, fear, anger, hate. You see the problem when we close our minds off, we come up with negative, damaging aspects of our lives that keep things closed off. We need never be casual or impulsive when it comes to God because the more we study, the more we love, the more we pray, the more we forgive, the more we accept, the more disciplined and honed our faith will become. A disciplined faith means that our ears, our eyes, our feelings, and our minds are open to God's Spirit to come in and reside in our hearts. When living that way, our jealousy becomes sympathy, our prejudice becomes unbiased, indifference becomes acceptance, selfishness, generosity, Pride, humbleness, fear, trust, anger, compassion, hate becomes love. Being disciplined in our faith is hard and it takes a lot of time and a lot of focus to get things right. And what makes it so hard is that we live in a society that is being swept up by technology and everyone needs the latest gadgets and the newest device just to keep up with the Joneses. As they say, now when I was a boy, seven, eight, nine years old, we had this fantastic piece of technology in our home. It was a box. 
This box had numbers on the outside of it. This box hung on the wall and it hung and in the corner of the box there was this long snake-like cord that fitted to a receiver. Now I see the smiles. It was a great piece of technology. To operate it, you would insert a special code depending on the numbers pushed and instantly with the aid of this box, you would become connected to another person in another place and you could talk to each other back and forth through the box. This technologically advanced piece of equipment was called the telephone. I actually did live in a time with the circle, but, but on the wall, where it was better for the station was the push button one. The circle one sat on the desk. As long as you were standing next to this box on the wall, you could talk to anyone you wanted. And I don't know in your house, in my house, that card became all tangled and bunched because you walked all around the house talking on the phone with this box. But look at our phone today. Look how technology has come. People carry their phones in their pockets. This mobile device allows you to talk to anyone at any time. Oops, did I say talk? I meant to say talk and text and email and fax and tweet and Snapchat and send pictures and download files and write notes and set an alarm and tell time and use a stopwatch and a calculator and a calendar. You can download your music, you can surf the net, you can set your home security system, you can purchase concert tickets, you can read the latest novel, and you can set your ringer to play the scary Darth Vader Star Wars music on your phone. Phones do almost everything. And those that create them are making new advances all the time. And we're just beginning to scratch the surface on where technology will take us as a society. That is the world that we live in. Fast paced, hectic, moving forward, changing and improving on a daily basis. Technology is designed to make our lives easier and more convenient. And in doing so, sometimes I think it makes some of us selfish and entitled. With all that we have available at our fingertips, it is harder to be accepting and encouraging and patient and teachable. We are supposed to be the soil that hears the word, understands it, follows it, and lives their lives with God in their heart. However, we get so wrapped up in this world that we sometimes forget to pray and to study and to read scripture and to let God's word sink. In. We get so wrapped up in the place, in the pace of our lives that we forget that a patient heart involves dedication and time and serenity and staying focused. We get so wrapped up in our lives that God sometimes takes second place. In order for us to be that good soil, we must be nurtured and tended to and disciplined. It's not hard when we hear God's word, we live out God's word, and we do it in such a way that our minds will be opened, our spirits will be disciplined, and our lives will be full of God's love. Each and every day we make a choice to, whether that choice is consciously or subconsciously, we make a choice. We decide to do right or wrong, good or bad, to be selfish or selfless, to be casual or disciplined, in our relationship with God. Now, it's usually at this point, round right about this point, that I make the long trek from here to there, and I, I tell a story and bring it together. And, and don't panic, I'm not moving away from that. But what I want to tell you today is from Max Lucado, and it needs to be said exactly how he said it. And quite frankly, it's too long to memorize word for word and get perfect. So I want to read you something from his book when god whispers your name it's about choosing and I, th I think it works beautifully with what we're learning today here's what max Lucado says it's quiet it's early and my coffee is hot the sky is still black the world is still asleep the day is coming in a few moments the day will arrive it will roar down the track with the rising of the sun the stillness of the dawn will be exchanged for the noise of the day. The calm of solitude will be replaced by the pounding pace of the human race. The refuge of the early morning will be invaded by decisions to be made and deadlines to be met. 
For the next 12 hours, I will be exposed to the day's demands. It is now that I must make a choice. Because of Calvary, I am free to choose. And so I choose. I choose love. No occasion justifies hatred. No injustice warrants bitterness. I choose love. Today I will love God and I will love what God does. I choose joy. I will invite my God to be the God of circumstance. I will refuse the temptation to be cynical. I will refuse to see people as anything less than human beings. I will refuse to see any problem as less than an opportunity to serve God. I choose peace. I will love forgiven and I will forgive so that I may love. I choose patience. I will overlook the inconveniences of the world. Instead of cursing the one who takes my place, I will invite him to do so. Rather than complain that the wait is too long, I will thank God for a moment to pray. Instead of clenching my fist at the new assignment, I will face it with joy and courage. I choose kindness. I will be kind to the poor, for they are alone. Kind to the rich, for they are afraid. Kind to the unkind, for that is how God has treated me. I choose goodness. I will go without a dollar before I take a dishonest one. I will be overlooked before I boast. I will confess before I accuse. I choose faithfulness. Today I will keep my promises. My debtors will not regret their trust. My associates will not question my word. My wife will not question my devotion. My children will never fear that their father will not come home. I choose gentleness. Nothing is won by force. If I raise my voice, may it be in praise. If I raise my hand, may it be in prayer. If I make a demand, may it not only be for myself. I choose self-control. I am a spiritual be being after this body is dead. My spirit will soar. I refuse to let what will not rot rule the eternal. I choose self-control. I will be drunk only with joy. I will be impassioned only by faith. I will be influenced only by God. I will be taught by Christ. Today in Scripture, we learn about four different soils, four different places that seed was planted. Only one was the good soil. So each day, we need to make a choice. Choose the good soil and thank God for your success. Choose the good so soil and take to God your failures. Choose the good soil and go to bed at night with God's peace. Let us pray. Gracious God, be with us this day. Help us to choose, to choose right, and to choose you by our side, now and always. Amen.